another What's Happening, a quiz show which is based on the things that have been going on around the world over the last seven days or so. The two teams always represent local radio stations. Let's meet today's two teams. First of all, we have Radio 210, which serves the five counties west of London, and they work on medium wave and VHF stereo. It's a Reading-based outfit. And their players are, the youngest player is Catherine Patrick, who's 11. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jeanette Dell, who's 12. Hello, Jeanette. Hello. Hi. Uh, behind Jeanette, we have 13-year-old Gavin Megnorth. Hi. Hi. And their senior player, their oldest player, is Neville Swift, age 14. Hello. Who prefers to be called Nev, right? And fair enough. OK. Now, their opponents today are Harrowwood Radio, which is based in Peterborough, and they serve Harrowwood country. And their players are, the youngest is 11-year-old Gemma Richardson. Hello, Gemma. Hello. Hi. Uh, next to Gemma is Mark Dodds, who's 12. Hi. Hello, Mark. Hi. Hi. Behind Mark, we have 13-year-old Francis Byrne. Welcome, Francis. Hi. Hello. And their senior player, their oldest player, is David Sadler, who is 14. Hello, Hello. David. Hello. Right, those are the two teams, so you can make your minds up now who exactly you want to support. Quick reminder that it's ten points for a correct answer, five if you're halfway there, you get nothing for nothing, obviously. Uh, all the teams in the competition are competing for the What's Happening trophy, right? A magnificent thing in cut glass like that, and the winning players on the winning team will all receive a home computer, right? Ooh, very nice it is too. So, without further ado, I think, on to round one. Questions on things that have happened over the last seven days. One question for each member of each team, beginning with 210. So, it's Catherine. And straight away, Catherine, we've got something for you to look at. Now, something was auctioned this week. A very famous auction it was. Uh, the item was bought by an anonymous bidder on the telephone. What was bought? 980 One million. One million and fifty... One million and fifty thousand. You're so quick, aren't you? Go on, what was it again? Suit of armour. Yes, that's right. A very uh, expensive suit of armour. How much was it sold for? Do you remember? Nearly £2 million. One million seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds I think it was. Well done. There it is, look. <laughs> very trendy in Henry II's day. So well done there. Ten points for you. Now, Jeanette, we move on to you. Um, two famous figures from show business I'm going to show you. Who are they and why have they been in the news this week? Um... Oh, mine's gone blank. Can't remember mine's gone blank. Two famous show business people in the news this week. Mines do go blank, don't they? No. No. Unlucky. It's uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, and they've opened in Broadway in a play called Private Lives by Noel Coward, which a lot of people say is a bit like their private lives. People who keep getting married over and over again. Never mind, your mind will clear in just a second. Gavin, your question now. Which national newspaper offered a £1,000 reward for the first photograph of the so-called Beast of Exmoor? Which newspaper? Was it the Mail? It was the Express. And the Royal Marines, who were out hunting the beast, had to pull out for fear of shooting a photographer. Neville, your question. Now, whoever wins the general election, which is three or four weeks away now, Parliament will be without a former Labour leader who has decided to stand down. Who is it? Um. Former Labour leader will not stand again as an MP. Is it Callaghan? It's Harold Wilson. Mm. The wrong one. Oh, never mind. On we go to Harrowwood Radio. First question for them goes to Gemma. And Gemma, something for you to look at. Now, lava has been flying from this volcano in such quantities that it is now posing a serious threat to the surrounding villages. I want the name of the volcano. Etna. It's Etna for ten points. Well done, Gemma. Excellent. <laughs> Mark, your question. Uh, I want you to tell me if you can who these people are and why they are in the news this week. Who are they all? The, the all famous TV stars that have put money together to make a Comedy series. Oh, for Comedy. ten points. Absolutely right for ten points. Super. Well played. Francis, your question. Try this one. The unemployment figure for April was announced this week. What is it? Oof. Oof. If you can give me an approximation, I'm allowed to give you about a thousand either way. Three million fifty thousand. I'm afraid it's 3,169,879, which is a drop of 2,500. Hard lines there, Francis. David, last question in round one, and it's for you. We go back to the general election. Now, besides Harold Wilson, a former leader of the Liberal Party 
has also decided to stand down from Parliament at this election. Now, who's he? No, I don't know. No, it's a gentleman called Joe Grimmond. Unlucky there, David. End of round one. A check on the scoreboard shows us that Radio 210 have scored 10. Harold were just in the lead with a score of 20 as we move into round two. Questions for the youngest players on each of the two teams. So, Catherine, the first one is for you. The Secretary of State for Defence, speaking in favour of nuclear weapons this week, criticised neutral countries such as Ireland, and the Ireland government made a formal protest to Britain about his remarks. Who is our Secretary of State for Defence? Mr Heseltine. For ten points. Well played. <laughs> OK. Gemma, your question now. The CND has been in the news this week with their General Secretary, Monsignor Bruce Kent, given the go-ahead by senior churchmen to carry on campaigning. You have to tell me what the initial CND stand for. Campaign for nuclear disarmament. For ten points. Well done, Gemma. OK. <laughs> and on to round three. So, Jeanette. For 210, your question. Something for you to look at here. Something that has been spotted in the heavens very recently indeed. What is it and what's it called? It's the um, comet. It's called um, Iris Akari. Um, Iris Akari. Iris Akari. Mm -hmm. Iris Akari, I, I think um, you're so on top of the story, I have to give you a full ten points for that. There was just one little bit at the end of the name. There was just one little bit at the end of the name that, uh, that you just missed off. There was Iris Akari Alcock, Alcock being the English uh, astronomer who aided in discovering the comet. Have you seen it yet? Mm. You have? You got a glimpse of it? No, not actually. But you've been looking? Mm. All right, okay, so ten points there anyway. Let's cross to Harrowwood now. Mark your question. Something for you to listen to. I want you to tell me who are these announcements intended for and how are they going to be used? The number 22 is approaching. Is it for the um, bus stations? They've got a new computer that tells you when the buses are coming and what time they're going to be arrived for you to pick you up. OK, well, you're on the right track, but specifically who is the, the device going to assist? Um, the hard of hearing. I mean... for the of people who are going to go on the buses. Mm. The important thing about this story is that it's going to help blind people who couldn't otherwise see what buses were coming. Mm -hmm. But I can certainly give you five, because you, you're, you're certainly halfway there on the story, but I really did have to have blind people, because that's, that's as I say, what the device... Which is called... Do you know what it's called? Elm or something. Like LC. LC, it's called. OK, so, end of round three. Some complicated scoring there. Let's see what the scoreboard tells us. Harrowwood 35 and Radio 21030, so virtually nothing in it. Well done, both teams. As we go on to round four. And this, of course, is where we get newsreader Leonard Parkin to read a bulletin containing three mistakes. Now, our teams have to spot those three mistakes and correct them. That'll win them the maximum of 30 points. Leonard. News from abroad. The West German economy is making some progress after the problems caused by the recession. The German currency, the ruble, is currently worth approximately 30 pence. And the German leader, whose post is called the Commissar, Herr Kohl, said today in the German parliament, the Bundestag, in the capital Frankfurt, that a major economic revival was on the way. West Germany was formed in 1945 after the war and is a unique country in that one of its cities, West Berlin, is in another country, East Germany. Berlin was divided so that Russia could patrol East Berlin and the West the remaining sector. So three mistakes there. If you'd like to have a little conference and give your answers to Neville, I'll come back to you in just a second. Uh, some topical letters came in during the week, and there's one that I want to read because we've only just been on this subject on the programme today, and that's the business about awarding five points for some questions. I got a letter from uh, Miss M. Bongartz, who lives in Edinburgh, asking me how we decide that some answers only deserve five points. It's down to this. Some questions divide themselves very neatly into two areas, the gist of the story and the details of the story. And if somebody's got the gist dead right, but has missed out on all the details, they get five points, if, and vice versa, again five points. But if they're almost completely there with both the gist and the details, that earns them the ten points. OK, thanks for that uh, particular query. Do write to the programme if there's anything you want to ask about or point out. The address at the end of the programme. Now then, Neville, we want three mistakes, first of all. Um, well, the capital's not Frankfurt, it's Bonn. OK, that's got your total of ten so far. And it's not the ruble, the currency, it's the mark. 
20 so far. And the... Oh, we're having a guess at this. We didn't know, so we had a guess. And the... Herr Cole isn't the Prime Minister. He is the Chancellor. Mm. It, we called him a Commissar, I think. Mm. And the Commissar is not the title that the leader of West Germany goes under. It's a Chancellor. So he scored a total of 20 points, Radio 210. Well done. <laughs> Let's see whether Herald Radio can match that, shall we? Once again, Lennon's going to make three mistakes in this bulletin. You have to find the three mistakes, and you have to correct those mistakes. That will win you a total of 30 points. Leonard. There's controversy in the entertainment industry over rock stars turning to movie making. Some actors are claiming it's unfair that stars who have made their name singing should be allowed to walk into plum film roles without serving an apprenticeship. Most recently, Gordon Sumner, alias Wham of The Police, starred in Dennis Potter's film Brimstone and Treacle. Mick Jagger of The Who started the trend when he starred as Ned Kelly in a film about the Australian bushwhacker. The Actors' Union parity hasn't yet commented on the dispute. Three mistakes there. Give them to David, and I'll get them from him in just a tick. Another nice letter, and I, got, uh, I get a lot of letters on this particular tack. This one comes from Mrs Tony Hobday, who lives down in Kent. And she says, thank you for hosting such a good programme on television like it, but also, I can't answer most of the questions. And I listen to the news and read the papers on most days. She's really going on to point out that she wonders whether young people actually know more about the news and current affairs than adults do. I wouldn't mind your views on that. Address at the end of the programme once again. Now then, David, three mistakes, first of all. Um, the singer they called Kwame is really Sting. OK, for ten points. Uh, Mick Jagger is a member of the Rolling Stones. For twenty so far. And the Actors' Union is equity. For a maximum of thirty, so well done, Harrowwood Radio. A maximum of thirty points in round four there. <laughs> well played. As we move into round five, questions for our 13-year-olds, beginning with Gavin for 210. Something for you to look at, Gavin? A famous figure from the world of sport receiving a salute from his many fans. Who is he? Where is he? And in particular, why were they saluting him last Saturday? It's Bob Paisley at Anfield and he's leaving the club. For ten points. Absolutely. <laughs> I get the impression you could have gone on all day about it, couldn't you, as well? Well done, Gavin. Excellent. Harrowood and Francis, your question. Who is this gentleman and why did he make the news this week? Oh, it's... Hugh, oh, Hugh something. He won the Mastermind quiz. OK, well, you've certainly got five. Mm. Do you want it? Do you want to...? Um, it's going to have to be a guess, is it, on the name? Mm. No. You're saying his first name's Hugh? I think so. I don't think I can give you any more than five. Christopher Hughes is his name. Oh. You thought it was Hugh somebody or other. So I'll give you a total of five for that, for getting the fact that he's just won the Mastermind competition. And he's the tube driver, isn't he? <laughs> Right, well done, Francis. OK, on we go now to round six, and this is where I read each member of each team a news story, an unusual one. Now, some of these were actually reported in the press over the last seven days. Some of them I made up. They have to distinguish between the two. Tell me true or false. The first one is for Catherine, and here it comes. 69-year-old Wilfred Barton of Bootle was given an unconditional discharge at Bootle County Court last week after the court heard that he broke the 30-mile-an-hour speed limit on his five-speed tricycle because he was late picking up his pension. False. False it is. Ten points. <laughs> Jeanette, here's your turn. 64-year-old Arthur Charlands has given his ageing goldfish Frida a new lease of life by making her a set of water wings. False. It's true. He actually did. <laughs> it ha really, for real. I know. Crazy, isn't it? <coughs> Gavin, here's yours. Dr Roland Davis of St Mary's Hospital reports that nearly half of Britain's chiropodists suffer from an allergy to toenail dust. False. It's true. It's absolutely true. Smelly, but true. OK, Nev. A letter was delivered to the Queen at Buckingham Palace this week from a brewery telling her not to worry because the beer lorry was on its way. The letter was intended for a pub called the Queen in Hampshire. It's true. It is true. For ten points. Well done, Nev. <laughs> Over to Harrowood. Gemma, here comes yours. The crew of the US nuclear submarine Conqueror, now returning from duty in the Antarctic, have explained that their day-late arrival is due to the crew's reluctance to spoil the fun of penguins who are using the conning tower as a slide. False. It is false for ten points. Well spotted. <laughs> Mark. A new cheese 
that smells so revolting, shopkeepers won't stock it, has been withdrawn from sale in Paris. True. It's false. Francis, here's yours. Farmer Lawrence Littley went muck spreading in his fields at the weekend and then he drove home. Unfortunately, he forgot to switch the muck spreader off, much to the annoyance of the residents of Musbury in Devon. True. For ten points. Well done. <laughs> Finally, in this round, David, one idea which didn't get onto television screens in America last year was one for Super Pig, the everyday adventures of a crime-fighting pig. False. Of course it is. For ten points, well spotted. OK. <laughs> End of round six. Quite a few points scored there. Let's see how it's affected the overall score, shall we? And Radio 210 have scored 80. They're hard on the heels of Hereward, who scored an excellent 100 so far. Well on both sides. <laughs> round seven. Questions for the senior players on each of the two teams. So, Nev, you're going first. Something for you to look at. I want you to tell me what is this object in this man's hand and why was it nearly the cause of a disaster? Mm. Mm. Was it put on cars and it was bad it was a thing for brakes and it didn't the brakes didn't work or something? Well, it's, a, it's an excellent educated guess, but I don't think it's even close enough for me to give you any points at all. In fact, the story concerns an Eastern Airlines TriStar plane flying out of Miami, which developed engine failure. As we can see here at 9.28, this is a reconstruction, obviously, an animated reconstruction. One of the plane's engines shut down, so it went back, and then the other two engines all quit, to use Americanese. It just about got home and made it, and the cause of the problem was those two tiny little rubber washers that you saw that guy holding, which fit on the Rolls-Royce engines. And that was why nearly all those people lost their lives. Hard lines, Neville. Complicated story. Let's move on to David. Your question, something once again for you to look at. I want you to tell me, as comprehensively as you can, what's happening here, where and why? Um. Is that in Reading when uh, some youths were attacking the police? Well, for no points. In fact, it's taking place in Paris, where uh, student riots, which were begun by the pharmaceutical students, are spreading, OK? Aimed at President Mitterrand's economic measures, OK? Unlucky there. End of round seven. I don't think we've affected the score since round six. No, we haven't. Still 80 plays 100. As we go into the final round, that's questions on things that have happened, things that have been reported, in fact, over the last 24 hours, one question for each member of each team. OK, and Catherine, you go first for 210. The sports minister, Neil McFarlane, last night attacked footballers' conduct on the field and singled out one incident involving the footballer of the year for criticism. Now, who is the current footballer of the year? Kenny Dalglish. For 10 points. Well done, Catherine. <laughs> Excellent. OK. Over to Hereward's 11-year-old, and that's Gemma. Mensa, which is the organisation for people who have IQs in the 150-plus bracket, have chosen their 1983 super brain. Who is it? No. The super brain of 1983. No? I think it was reported in this morning's press. Anybody know? Gabriel. Hang on, somebody on 210. Who's going to go for it? Oh, Gab you could your captain go for it. That's democratic of you. It was Gabrielle Malloy, and she had an IQ of 175. She did, didn't she? Mm. Like you? No. No. Right, fair enough. OK. Hard lines there, Gemma. That was a tricky one. OK, on to the 12-year-olds. Jeanette, your question. Something for you to look at. A rather unusual aircraft. And I want you to tell me, if you can, what's the story here? It was the um, 11 um, unemployed um, men who were building it. They built it and it was launched today, yesterday. I think you've got enough there to earn a full ten points. It was 20 young gentlemen who were on a YOPS scheme. Mm. The, the YOPS scheme has ended now. They're only on it for a year. They've got to go back on the dole, unfortunately, uh, once the scheme's ended. But they decided as their project to build a, a, a one-seat aircraft called Mercury. Mm. That was it. They did it successfully and you've won ten points. 
OK, we cross to Mark now. Mark, can you tell me which industry, key industry, last night announced a total of 1,300 redundancies at three of its plants? Front page on lots of the papers. <coughs> no? British Rail. Afraid it was steel, the industry which is losing two to three million pounds a week. Unlucky there, Mark. When we go to Gavin, your question. The government wants to bring new laws about people's money into force before the general election. It's called the Finance Bill. But they need the Labour Party to agree so that it can become law more quickly than usual. But last night, Labour refused to accept two areas of the Finance Bill. Can you tell me what they are? It was the mortgage and the, um... For five? And the, um... <coughs> oh, and the, um... Have to hurry Engine? up. Afraid not. It was, uh, it was, uh, super tax. It was high tax earnings. But you won five points. Well done. Well done. <laughs> On to Francis. One of the world's most respected writers received £110,000, the Templeton Prize. It was presented to him at Buckingham Palace by Prince Philip. This happened yesterday. Who is he? The writer, not Prince Philip. <laughs> no? no? Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Difficult word to say at the best of times. Never mind. Right, Nev, your question. The Hitler Diaries. Stern magazine last night sacked the reporter who found the forgeries. Who is he? Gerd Heidemann. Ten points. <laughs> David. Share prices tumbled yesterday as investors paused to consider the implications of an election. At the end of the day, there was £2,500 million less invested in industry in the form of shares. Now, the FT index started yesterday at 690.2. Can you tell me what it closed at? 6.7. No, 67 point something. Want to try again? Just, you're messing around with figures? No. Nope. No. It was 676.7. No points, I'm afraid. Unlucky. As we end round eight, end the competition, and with bated breath, take a look at the final scoreboard. And it shows that Hereward Radio scored an excellent 100, but Radio 210 just sneaked up on them and managed to clinch it with 115. <laughs> well done, 210. OK, on to last week's postal quiz. It was a complicated one. We asked you to uh, send us in some information about something which hadn't happened yet. Much to our surprise, the event didn't happen at all. The local government elections were far too complicated for us to all uh, give a prize at all. This week's question, though, Aberdeen are playing in the European Cup Winners' Cup tonight. I want to know who was the last Scottish side to play in a European Cup final. This is the address to write to very quickly. It's what's happening, Central, Broad Street, Birmingham, B1, 2JP. See you at the usual time next week with another What's Happening. Bye-bye. <laughs>